pretty soon AMD is going to be releasing their flagship 6900 XT to go up against this, the infamous RTX 3090. I'm going to tell you some very surprising reasons as to which of these GPUs are going to come out on top. So let's talk about it. Hey guys, Tiago here. So this is in fact an RTX 3090, and while it is a little bit maligned in terms of the other GPUs, everybody loves the 3080, even the 3070, as well as some of the new AMD GPUs, this one certainly does not have the best price to performance ratio, and when AMD announced the 6900 XT at $999, certainly was pretty interesting seeing how well it was performing against this, especially in some of AMD's own benchmarks, but that's going to be the keyword here. That's AMD own benchmarks and as we've seen so far with some of the recent launches a lot of this has been theoretical and has not played out in the real world so let's talk about a few different areas where the 6900 XT may be better than this and some key areas where this may still be better than the 6900 XT. So the first and perhaps the most important point we're going to talk about is going to be stock and availability. Now we're going to take a lot of this information from what we've seen from the AMD launch of the 6800 and the 6800 XT. As is widely known, that launch was certainly extremely limited and continues to be so. For example, the reference GPUs when they were launched certain stores like Micro Center got maybe 10 to 15 of the 6800, maybe 2 to 4 of the 6800 XT, being a very, very limited launch. While if you compare it to something like the 3070, stores got over 100, a lot more people were able to get GPUs. And of course, even if you compare it against the original launch of the RTX 3080, that one was certainly limited as well. And that one came a few months before AMD, to be completely fair. But since then, we certainly have seen some restocking and a little bit more availability, especially early Earlier on compared to the AMD GPUs. And then we don't even have to talk about the reference model AMD GPUs. According to AMD themselves, it might be another few months before we start to see these GPUs available. What I mean here is like the founders or reference edition that AMD launched initially, that's manufactured by AMD. The third party AIB partner GPUs, that's going to be sort of, you know, specific and custom coolers by like uh, Asus and PowerColor, Sapphire, those companies that work with AMD. So those supposedly were supposed to be out around November 25th, but we saw very, very little stock of them. And AMD has said themselves it's going to be a few months before we really see them. And we're going to talk about pricing and MSRP later on, because there's another little bit of a shock there when we talk about those prices. So having said all that, where does that leave the 6900 XT compared to the RTX 3090 in terms of stock and availability? Now, if we can see as a baseline that the lower end GPUs, such as the 6800, were available in much greater quantities than something like a 6800 XT, we can only assume that the trend is going to continue and the 6900 XT, which is not only a lot higher performing, but a lot more expensive, is also going to be available in much lower numbers. If I had to guess on the numbers that we saw so far, I would say it would be at most the numbers of the 6800 XT, but perhaps even lower since this is, after all, a much higher end and a more niche GPU. Now, this is all based on everything that AMD has launched so far and sort of the availability in the market today. Of course, they could go out and surprise us and have a truckload of 6900 XTs, but of course, we know that's going to be extremely unlikely. So that way, I say for the upcoming launch, and that launch will be on December 8th, expect it to be even rarer than the 6800 XT, uh, the reference model specifically. Now, the AIB models, probably the same story as we had with the 6800 and 6800 XT. I think it's going to be non existent for quite a while. So, we'll probably just see an initial rush of the reference 6900 XT. And then later on, probably next year sometime, is when I expect us to see more of these GPUs as well as the other models coming into stock. So, how does the stock compare against the RTX 3090? It's a little bit funny actually. The RTX 3090 most likely due to its much higher price and its perceived value for the price that you're paying for the performance has actually been a lot easier to find than other GPUs. I'll give you guys a few concrete examples. Even myself, I signed up for the EVGA Q system as soon as these GPUs came out. The 3080 took a long, long time. In fact, I recently just got a notification for the 3080 after months that it launched that I would be able to get one. The 3090 was certainly a much lower time and especially 
especially some GPUs like the For the Win 3 Ultra, the RTX 3090, and even a GPU like the EVGA For the Win 3, which is going to be, you know, a few hundred dollars more expensive than even the Founders Edition that I showed earlier. They seem to be available in much greater numbers at their MSRP across the internet. Even some stores, I had somebody tell me that uh, their local Micro Center actually had one on the shelf. You could just walk in and buy it, and it seemed to be there for quite a while. So it certainly seems like the RTX 3090, definitely due to its much higher price and its performance for the value that you're getting, people just aren't as interested in that GPU. We can assume here the 3080 and 3070 definitely are going to be the best bang for your buck. And I think the same holds true for the 6900 XT. That's certainly going to be probably not the best bang for your buck. People are still going to be going for the lower end 6800 and the 6800 XT. So the stock of the RTX 3090 definitely a lot of times seems to be easier to find than the 3080, even though it is supposed to be a little bit rarer of a GPU. It's just that not as many people want to spend that much for that class of GPU. Therefore, stock is a little bit more available at its MSRP. And then this is where we get into the second point of the discussion, and that's going to be the price in the MSRP. And then this is where we get into the second point of the discussion on the 6900 XT, and that's price and the MSRP. Now, AMD revealed the MSRP to be $999, and as we saw from benchmarks, that certainly seemed pretty impressive against the $1,500 RTX 3090. But here's the major problem. This was the reference model, and while AMD's reference model 6800 and the 6800 XT were at their announced prices of $579 and $649, not only were they really scarcely available, when the AIB partner cards were revealed and not really launched, it's still probably going to be a few months, the MSRP, and I did a separate video on this, MSRP of those AIB partner cards were certainly extremely high. For example, some special models like the Asus LC that has the liquid cooler were $900, and even regular 6800 XTs with regular fan designs, some of the higher end ones were well into the $800 range, which is significantly more than a 6800 XT should be at $649, and it's pretty much getting very close to the price of the 6900 XT reference model. So then of course you may say, well of course the partner cards, even in video are always more expensive and I do agree with you but the thing here is the premium put on these 6800 cards 6800 XT cards from the AIB partners the premium seems more excessive than even Nvidia does for example you can find a lot of 3080s around that 750 to below $800 range even the third party models of course the reference is about $699 so that seems to be a pretty fair premium for a card that's not too specialty maybe like a 50 to 70 $5 premium and you would only expect the really high-end cards to be over $800 for the 3080 maybe like EVGA for the Win 3 or the Asus Strix those certainly are going to be GPUs that will demand a lot of a premium so having said that the 6900 XT while technically the reference model will be available for $999 I think you probably won't see that many of those and the AIB partner cards if they have the same type of premiums that you're seeing on the 6800 XT you can expect this to be well over a thousand dollars who knows probably some models at least 1100 1200 1300 who knows how high it's going to go we're going to keep an eye on those prices for the aib partner cards and then of course they will get pretty close to the price of a base rtx 3090 and then for a lot of people the 3090 may just be the better option definitely nvidia still has certain advantages over amd while they may not make as much sense to go for when it's 999 dollars versus 1500 if it's more like 12 or 1300 versus 15 or 1600 certainly it does close that gap considerably. So in terms of performance, the RTX 3090 isn't more expensive than the 6900 XT just because it's a premium product. It does have certain things that definitely add up and actually make it worth the performance for those people that need it. For example, it has 24 gigabytes of VRAM of GDDR6X. Now the 6900 XT is only going to have 16 gigabytes and it's going to be the slower variant GDDR6. Of course, AMD has some other software magic in there like the Infinity cache which is supposed to make it go faster than it really is but still if you need 24 gigabytes of vram the 3090 is definitely going to be where to go and of course nvidia still leads in all of its different specialized applications its encoding is better in a lot of cases its encoding for content creators in a lot of cases are going to be better for streamers and people who edit video of course not to mention that ray tracing on the nvidia side is substantially more advanced since they have had a more of a 
head start. They have the LSS. So those type of technologies, AMD certainly is still not really up to par with Nvidia. And it's certainly gonna make a difference if you're trying to play a new game like Cyberpunk 2077. And if you want great ray tracing performance and really max this game out, you're gonna have to go for one of these Nvidia GPUs, or at least a minimum of a 3070, just because whatever ray tracing technology AMD has now is just not gonna cut it for these newer games. So that's certainly something to keep in mind. And as you can see, when you add up these different performance metrics together, these are very real things that are in the 3090. The, the 24 gigabytes of VRAM versus 16 is a very real limitation for a lot of people that may need it for content creation and things like that. Of course, these GPUs are not really the best gaming GPUs for performance for the dollar. Of course, they're going to perform better than anything else, but I really think the sweet spot, if you want to find something that performs well for your dollar, is going to be the 3070, 3080, or the 6800 XT. I always thought the 6800 is a little bit too expensive for what it is. 6800 XT, definitely the sweet spot, and I would say the sweet spot is either the 3080 or 3070 as well, in terms of the performance and also the price that you're paying for them. Of course, AMD does have certain technologies in the 6900 XT that do make it a little bit interesting and perform better. Of course, the smart access memory, which gives it synergy with Ryzen 5000 CPUs, as well as some automatic rage mode overclocking, which can give you some more performance. But certainly those things, while interesting and giving you performance, won't be applicable in every use case and every situation. That's why I think, especially when you consider that the price of the more readily available AIB models may creep up pretty close to the 3090, it may make more sense for some people that actually need it for content creation or want that extra power, you may actually be getting a little more for your money with the 3090 versus the 6900 XT. All right, guys, so thank you very much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. Remember to smash that like button, subscribe, a lot more content like this coming up, and I'll see you guys on the next video.